Okay, so last week, and you have a recording of this at our YouTube channel, which is without the discussions that we have here because the cable wasn't available to do the recording, but everything is in that lecture. So if you go back to the lecture recording, everything we did here is there. The model that we're looking at is, as you realize, is my robot, current, position, velocity, and so on. At the current time, gives me the value of those variables at the next discrete time. And this is xn plus 1 equal to f of xn. And by now, you probably realize that n is discrete, goes from 1 to 2 to 3, and so on. And f might take different shapes depending on the system we are trying to model. Okay? And the best thing to do is to say, let's take very simple systems. So we took a very simple system, which was this given here, x n plus 1, equal to 1 half of where I was before. Can you relate this model to a physical problem? Maybe decay half-lives? Decay half-lives? Right, like every discrete time, you lose half. You lose half. Almost looks like my bank account, right? <laughs> every time I take my children around, half of it goes away. Right? <laughs> but think about this. Does, does any of you remember the what is called the Zeno paradox? Okay. So there is this rabbit running around, and there is this turtle, right? And the rabbit is about to win the race. And the turtle says, well, let's do this. What about um, you do half of the step of my step? OK, so what will happen is that, and you will probably look it up. It's called the Zeno paradox. It's very interesting. What will happen is that these distances between these two systems, in this case, the turtle and the rabbit, will be cut in half at every decision they make. And as you realize how many steps it takes for the distance to be zero. Does it take one step to, for the distance to be zero? No, because if the distance initially is one, like in this plot, if the initial distance is one, the distance after will be one half. And the one after? One fourth. And the one after the step i will be one over two to the i minus one. So you can specifically decide or compute how far away these two things are. So it actually it turns out that it takes infinitely moves for these guys to meet. Okay? And then that's the story. That's a simple model of something that cuts the distance in half. We're going to look at more interesting models. One of them, very soon, corresponding to the robot that you're using in the lab. Okay. So how did lab 3 go? Pretty good overall? OK. So here is what you did in lab 3. So you took this robot, right? Everybody familiar, everybody familiar with S2? Great. So this scribbler can be programmed using spin. In particular, you can change one very important variable for the system, which is the lights. What about motion variables? Movement, right, call this direction x and the orthogonal y. You can change the x, y, and also the angle, correct? By using a differential um, signal on the wheels. So you might want to come up with a model that says, how do the, does the position of, let's say, this center changes over time and over discrete time? So that will be our model related to this. And very soon we're going to come up with a model of the angle. 
Once we introduce inputs, which in this system will be essentially the angular velocity on these wheels, then we will be able to talk about the robot more tangibly. Okay? But there is an F, there is a map that will give you from you where you are to where you want to be with maybe some algorithm program into the scribbler. Okay? And maybe you realize that some of the functions that you want to code are maybe MATLAB looking functions, right? This is something like how you code an if in MATLAB. Almost, right? It's pretty similar. So actually use if. This x equal to 1, then you do this. So you set the LEDs. If it is equal to 2, which is an else if, you set up those LEDs. And you can think about this as an F of the dynamics of the LEDs. So if my current state x at time 1 is equal to 1, the next value of the state x at time 2, where x now says whether these LEDs are on and off, will change according to these commands. Okay? This is not related to motion. This is just to the value of the LED being on and off, or maybe color green, or color red, or whatnot. So that's how this F come up. And there was one particular property we wanted to understand, which was, is there a value of my state where if I start, I stay? I'm going to call those the fixed points. Okay? How do we compute the fixed points? Well, we go to the definition of fixed points. And we need to solve for this x star. We need to find all x stars such that this is true. Any questions about this? Yeah. One question for the When you just gave the definition of a fixed point, you said, when I start, I'll stay. What do you mean, you mean when the robot, like the program starts at a point and it stays, the program makes the robot remain at that point? Very good question. Look at, look at this example. X of n plus 1 equal to 1 half of xn. Okay. What are the fixed points of those, of that system, of that f? Are all the x stars such that x star is equal to f of x star? Okay. So there's a question in the homework that some of you asked me about, which is, what is the orbit from x1 equal to x star? Anyone can tell me what the orbit is from x1 equal to x star? All x stars. All x stars. Because when you compute the orbit for this system from x star, which in this system x star is only 0, mm -hmm. then 1 half times 0 is 0. So if you start at x star, which is 0, you go back to x star, which is 0. And if you remember that plot of that cosine of xn, mm -hmm. remember that we were saying, well, what is x star here? Well, look at the tail. Is almost like 0 0.73, whatever, because if I start at that point, I go back to the point. It loops back around. It loops back okay. around to the point. So the robot doesn't just, it'll be transcended with robotic motion. The robot just won't stay there, but it'll complete it and then come back to it. It will depend on in which model you're referring to. Again, always remember that this is all discrete time. We are not modeling what happened in between two discrete times. But there could be a curve, as you say, yeah. or it could be that the robot remains there. Mm. So we don't know. And that's a reason to consider a continuous time model, which we will not cover here. But the claim is that if your sampling time is small enough, then you will be able to see the curve. Or you will be able to see that the robot really stayed there mm. in between times, discrete times. Good question. Other questions? Okay. X of X star equals cosine X star equals F and X star one star. Good. So that is to find the fixed points. And we did a few examples. We did the example of AXN plus B. Okay, we found all the fixed points for different values of A and B. 
and I suggested a way to do the fixed points for the cosine, which is a graphical way which could be useful in most problems. Okay? So as we described at the end of the lecture, we said, all right, fair enough, now we have a tool to compute the fixed points. In other words, we can solve for x star equal to f of x star. That's as complicated as f would be, right? That's typically a polynomial or some sort of, um, you know, solving a different uh, equation or a family of equations. All right, what we're going to do today is to introduce two notions. I would like to know whether my orbits converge to x star, no matter where they start. And I would like to know whether if the orbits start nearby x star, they go back to x star. Okay. So we're going to start with the stability first. So once we have calculated the fixed points of a discrete time system and model of our system, we study its stability and attractivity property. Okay. okay, so we're going to define those. The first one will be stability. So a fixed point x star or x star, the star could be upper or lower, just cope with us, that might change, is said to be stable. If for any x1 sufficiently close to x star, the resulting orbit from x1 remains close to x star. Okay? So, a graphical representation of this will be probably easier to see. So let's say that I have my x and y for position. So this is position uh, in horizontal direction, and this is position <coughs> vertical. 
And I have identified that this point is a fixed point. <coughs> Right. What I'm going to be looking at it now, and I'm going to make it big so we can see, but typically these areas are maybe small. I'm going to be saying the following. If someone tells me that I would like my orbits that start within that distance, you can think about this as a ball around X star. So let's say that this is a particular uh, point where I, I initialize an orbit. Then that orbit will take values. Let's say from here it jumps to here. So that's X2. And from here it jumps to here. Let's say that this is X3. And then maybe from here it jumps to here. And this is X4. And maybe from here it jumps to here, this is x5, and it keeps staying here, x6, as you see the orbit keeps moving there. What I would like to be able to say is that if I want it to be this much close to x star, okay, so this is my distance. So this is the desired max distance to x star. Then I will need to have that my initial distance is this much. Okay. So the idea is that if the orbit starts in the red disk or ball, where this is x star, then it stays in the black orbit, the black disk, just a little bit bigger, perhaps. <coughs> likely, likely bigger, certainly not smaller. For all discrete time n. And we want to be able to do this for any desired maximum distance. Okay. So the idea is that given this guy, so the desired maximum distance is this particular radius, but we need to figure out whether there exists an initial distance that if I start within that distance, I stay with it that desired distance. Okay? So essentially, in simple terms, stability is telling me that my trajectories, my orbits, will not go too far away from where I started if I start close to the fixed point. Okay, they might overshoot a little bit, like this particular point right here that overshoots, but they might not go too far away. In other words, these orbits will not go, let's say, very, very large and then come back, or maybe not even come back. So there are two examples that are very physical, and then I'll give you time for questions. 
consider a bowl. So this is a bowl. You can craft this with a parabola that you might probably code in MATLAB, right? And now put a, a little bead or ball or something that will actually um, move, OK? And then you do the same experiment with the opposite. So you put an upside down bowl, and then you put a ball right there. Okay. So the question for you is, without looking at the F, okay, this is not necessarily modeling the F, is there a fixed point here for this system? I see some people saying yes. So where would the fixed point be? Right? So this particular location, let's say x star, and if my coordinate system is just that, that's 0, and this is positive x, and this is negative x, then that's a nice fixed point, right? From physics, because it's a ball. How does a fixed point work? I mean, does an object have to stop at something? Well, now we think about what would the concept of fixed point be, right, in this course, is that if I start at a point, I stay at that point. In other words, f of x star is equal to x star. That would be a fixed point. Then I know that if I start my ball here or here, there is gravity that is going to move it down. So certainly, neither these or these are fixed points, because if I start, I don't stay. Well, there is only one point, which is the origin and the end point, which is the, which is the same point in this problem, which is x star equal to zero. So if you apply physics, then you will realize that the f for this problem will map you back to zero when you start at zero. OK? Uh, does that mean that any function with a fixed point is stable? No. Because now you just reverse that ball, which will give you a different function, but you have the same fixed point, right? This is again in the same coordinate system. This is x star equal to zero. So what happens with this fixed point? Is it still a fixed point, right? Because if I start on the very top of this without any wind or without any perturbations, physically speaking, that's an equilibrium point. Right? But what happens with the orbits? I get different orbits, right? What are, what are the orbits I get here? In the first one. It always gets closer and closer. Good. If I start here, the orbit will, will flicker around that point, and then it will eventually converge to zero. Well, here, what is the orbit I get from x star equal to zero? It stays there, because it's a fixed point, right? But if I move a little bit to the left, the orbit is going to go this way. And if I'm pulling a little bit to the right, my x1 is a little bit to the right, it's going to go that way. So the question for us, is this fixed point stable? Right? So the answer is yes, because I can say I would like that ball to remain, let's say, plus minus 0 0.01. Then I know that if I start in this problem from a little bit smaller than that number, or even at that number, the ball will remain there. Okay? It might depend on which velocity you're applying. So we are not talking about velocity here, so this model is a little bit incomplete. It might be that the ball goes up a little bit, right? Because I push initial velocity that way, and then it comes back. But as you realize, you're going to be able to come up with, if I want to start, stay within this black ball, I can figure out a red ball region, 
that I will guarantee that it stays in the black region. But what about this one? Right? I say I like to be around this area. Is it a smaller area that if I start, I stay in the desired area? It's not, right? Because if you go either way, it's like false. Right. The only area that is red that I would allow is zero itself, right? But I cannot build more points or elements x1 nearby the fixed point. So with that rather kind of hand wavy argument, this is what we will expect to be a stable. And this will be not stable, or sometimes called unstable. <laughs> so questions about this? Can you say it again? Yes, I don't want to introduce that, but it's the same concept. An equilibrium point is a point that satisfies the um, fixed point equation. Yeah. So this distance will need to be larger than zero to make sense. And this the side max distance larger than zero for it to be make sense. Yeah. Um, on the second one, the sun stage will be like the first one stable because no matter which two points like like where you pick up something anywhere far away from zero, it still converges to zero. But on the second one, if you pick up one even a little bit away from zero, it falls to other side. Is that why it's unstable? Because it doesn't converge to zero on the second one. It doesn't need to converge. Oh it doesn't need to converge. It doesn't stable. need to converge. It doesn't need to converge. It just needs to stay. Oh, it just needs to stay at zero. It just needs to stay nearby. It just needs to stay nearby. So give me, let me give you a couple of, yes. So the way we're thinking of the, this kind of question is, uh, is this like a physics way to think about it? Yeah. These concepts come from physics. So let me, let me give you a simple example that I like you to. <laughs> think about. Okay. So get ready to do some work, okay? All right, so <clears throat> consider So this is this is a special case of what we already did. This is a equal minus one, b equals zero. Okay. All right. So is its fixed point stable? Okay, so let's take five minutes to find an answer to this question, okay? And I will not have, because of the quiz time, to walk around, but we're going to get your input, okay? So let's do... Well, that's a problem for you, right? So I'm telling you, here's the system. I'm asking you if the fixed point is stable. So from my question, there is only one fixed point. I'm not telling you which one it is. So you might need to find the fixed point first. Okay? So that's good practice. Once you find the fixed point, 
can you argue with what you know about orbits whether that fixed point is stable by using this definition? Okay? Is the question clear? All right. Let's do that. And yeah, feel free to discuss with your peers right there. Come up with an answer. Okay. So which one is the fixed point? So what is F? Okay, so this can be written as xn plus 1 equal f of xn with f evaluated at x equal to minus x, right? <coughs> because when I do that, I plug xn here, I get back this, minus xn. Everybody okay with that? The function is is an object that you can evaluate it at any variable you want, and I'm evaluating here at the point arbitrary x, and it will give me minus x. I'm just defining what the function is. Okay? Then I use it to the model to to describe the model, and it's giving me xn with a minus in front. Okay, so we calculate the fixed points. Namely, we need to solve. for x star such that x x star is equal to f of x star, where this f is 
minus x, so this will be minus x star. So how many x stars will satisfy this? One. This implies there's only one equal to zero. zero. Very good. Is this x star stable? Well, with the tools we have, we can try to build these regions in black and red and see whether we can argue that. So where is my x star? <coughs> it's here, right? It's at x star equal to zero. Okay. Okay. So if my orbit starts at x star, then it will remain, right? So this is my orbit from x1 equal to x star. Now let's pick x1 equal to a very small number. Let's call that number delta, just for simplicity, where it's positive, but it's small. Okay? And if that's the case, then this will be my x1 equal to delta. What will be x2? It will be minus delta. So then from x1, I go to x2. And what will be x3? Delta again. So this is x3. And what will be x4? Minus delta again, which is this guy. So the odd xi's go here, or xm's, and the even go here. Just plugged in, did you just make x of star zero? We're still carrying over x of star equals zero from the last one. So, yes, this is, this is my first orbit. Right. Okay? First orbit. Oh, from the origin point zero. zero. And now I do a second orbit. <coughs> I'm trying to get intuition to answer the question of whether this fixed point equal to zero is stable. Okay? So, is it a stable? Remember, the definition, the, the concept is, if I start close to the fixed point, my orbit stays close to the fixed point. This orbit says that if I start delta away, the orbit remains delta away. Very simple. Does the orbit converge to zero? No. It's not like, it's not like the ball. But they have a stability. Doesn't mean it's unstable. It doesn't mean that it's unstable, right? Because it remains around it. Okay? So this analysis says that because delta is small, the orbit starts close to x star because x1 is equal to x3 equal to as many as you want are all equal to delta and x2 is equal to x4 and so on this is all equal to minus delta are also close to x star, then the orbit remains close to x star. Okay. Uh, what if the maximum distance that you choose to that is less than delta or negative delta? That's what I was saying is that because the initial state of your orbit um, already defines a region around the x star, you couldn't pick a larger region, I'm sorry, a smaller region than the initial. Because already the initial condition, or x1, will be larger than that choice if it is a small. Let me, give me one second, and I'll give you the, the, the formal definition, which will not be used, but will give you the concept. Yes? 
Why did we use delta in the second orbit? I was just probing, probing different initial states so x1. Delta, delta, delta. I could have picked 7, and I would have gone to minus 7. But I just wanted to pick something that is adjustable and then be able to shrink it. So delta could be anything. Delta can be anything. Do you agree? Does everybody agree? Actually, we are looking at all possible orbits for the system, right? You either start at zero and stay at zero, or you start somewhere and you flip around. That's the, that's the system, right? So, so does delta in the second and third orbits of the universe define the maximum distance? So delta in this case is, a, is, a, is a, the initial value of my orbit, the initial point, OK? In this picture, the delta that I'm picking will be probably this distance here. Oh, it's a distance, it's not how long. In this picture. But in this problem, it's just the initial value. Okay? Can you find the fixed point to set star all equal zero? No. If you were looking at the previous lecture, we did it for xn plus 1 equal ax plus b, and it will depend on a and b. It might not be zero. Actually, you might have more than one fixed point. At different points, that's x to star is zero because you start at the origin. This x star is zero because the solution to this equation gives you zero. Okay. That's the only solution. Right. Okay. Oh, the only one that makes it work. The yeah. only solution to the fixed point equation is zero. Okay. So how do we guarantee this in general? How do we check this in general? Well, I'll give you a, a method in a minute for a particular class of f, but the general definition requires distances, as you realize, right? So what is the best way to measure distance? What do you use to measure distance between two points in on the plane? You use the distance formula, right? OK. Mm -hmm. Or you could use what is called the norm, the norm of the error, OK? So if we go back to this picture that I had earlier, if this is my x star and this is my x1, right? This in the um, this distance is the length of the vector. between x star and x1, OK? How do you compute the distance to the vector? The norm, right? So if you have a vector, let's call it v, of dimension v1, v2, all the way to v capital N, let's say, then the norm of that vector is what? I mean, you know this if you have only two, right? What is it? Square root. So this will be the magnitude, right? Of the vector of v is the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. That's for a vector in two dimensions. And if you check what it is for n dimensions, it will be that. OK? And now you can compute the distance between x1 and x star will be equal to, let's call it the distance between x1 and x star. But it's no more than the norm of x1 minus x star. So what you do here, you have x1, let's say, on the plane, two dimensions, x star, two dimensions. You take the first component of x1, the, sec the first component of x star, you subtract it, a square. And then that is added to the second component of x1 minus the second component of x star, a square. And when you finish, let's say dimension 2, you are done right there, you take a square root. And that will give you this length right here. Okay. 
Are you with me? Okay. Good news, we will not need these in many higher dimensions than three, I would say. But now we can say the following definition. Again, so this is for um, the definition of stability. We can use the distance between x star, x1, and the orbit. For the distribution of stability, we can use that. So let me write again the kind of high level definition. So stability is the property that if the orbit starts close, then it stays close to the fixed point. So we are talking about the stability of X star So how do we now using the distance do we characterize starting close to the fixed point? What can we do? We can use this distance. This will be written down as this quantity. Okay. And what about this other one? It stays close. Now we need to check every element of the orbit because we want it to stay close. So that it is. And we need to check this for each n. One, two, three. So it be important that you remember the notion, what it is, and that the notion does not imply convergence. Okay? Yeah, hold on. Are we okay with just our robot only having this property? So again, think about what this property would mean. Let's go back to what we had earlier this quarter. We had this picture showing the I can find it. Here we go. Showing our scribbler S2 uh, from an initial condition. Okay? And let's imagine that this point here corresponds to my X star that is my fixed point. Okay? Now, if this vehicle starts very far away from that point, the stability doesn't say anything. Correct? All it says that if it starts nearby here, it will stay nearby there. Okay? So stability alone is not very, very useful. What we would like to have is the property that this orbit converges to the fixed point. Okay? And that is the concept of attractivity. So the next definition of today is attractivity.
and is what you expect. Okay, so we have now the property of converging. Now, what do we mean by converging? Can someone tell me, at least in the context of this problem, what we mean by converging to a fixed point? As time goes on, it gets closer and closer. As time goes on, it gets closer and closer. Okay. What about now in the context of this other question? <laughs> well, you just said holes, but there's a specific feature of this orbit that I, I like you to tell me about. It's written there, yeah. Exactly. So the convergence might occur after finitely many steps in discrete time, or it might occur after infinitely many steps. This is an example of infinitely many steps. So it's almost like a limit in some cases. Correct. So that's what we wrote here, trying to kind of prepare you for it. The orbit can be written down mathematically as this sequence of points that if you take the limit, this is a geometric sequence that converges to zero. Okay, so as we define attractivity, we might want to distinguish between the two possibilities, which is the convergence property could be in finite time or it could be in the limit or as you probably find it in other uh, references asymptotically Okay, as you reach the asymptotes. If you're talking about finite time, right, then what we will need to figure out that there exists is that there exists, let's say, discrete time N star such that x at n star is equal to x star. In other words, after n star steps, you are at x star, and that x n is equal to x star for n larger than n star. So you approach it, you reach it after n star seconds, in this case steps, and then you stay there. Well, in the limit case, it would be that the limit as n goes to infinity of the orbit is equal to x star. So if now we go to this one, this is asymptotic or in the limit, attractivity. And you could probably argue as well that x star equal to zero is stable. Because you always cut in half. So if you start, let's say, delta away from the fixed point, 
after one iteration, you will be delta over two away. And another iteration will be delta over four. So you always, if you start close, you stay close. Furthermore, you converge. So you have both stability and attractivity. Okay. Questions? Any star. Any star. My eraser. This should be any star. All right. So, as you saw in the previous example. A system might have a fixed point a stable but not attractive. But not attractive. There are examples where the opposite is also possible. One might have attractivity, but not <coughs> stability. Okay. We will not get to those yet. They become a little bit more mathematical than we need. We'll get to a very simple case of an F where the fixed points are very easy to characterize and a condition for stability is very easy to write and a condition for attractivity is very easy to write. Okay? So let's do that and then at least let's introduce it. So this will be stability and attractivity in a class of linear discrete time models. Okay. And we already did this. So this is almost like a revision. To some extent. So we're going to look at consider the discrete time model x n plus one f of x n, where now this is a time x n. Okay, it's just a constant time x n, where this um, x n belongs to reals, and this a belongs to real. Okay, so this is what is called a scalar discrete time system. A scalar because the state is only a number. <coughs> So can someone tell me what the fixed points are? Maybe we should do it for the good exercise. So it's fixed points.
are x stars such that x star is equal to f of x star by the definition here of f what is this? a times x star from this and this I get x star equal to a times x star move one to the left or another one to the right I take the former I get that so what are the fixed points? if a is not one what is x star? zero if a is equal to one any x star in the reals will be a fixed point so this is for a different than one and this is for a equal to one so now the rule for stability and attractivity so for this system x star is stable if as we have in the reader if well the reader gives attractivity as well so it will be stable if the absolute value of a is less or equal than one it will be attractive if the absolute value of a is strictly less than one and if we have the absolute value of a larger than one it will be unstable okay so what is this saying this is saying that again for this let me put it back rather simple scalar system for which we know the fixed points then you got the system you realize has this form you check the absolute value of a so again this is the absolute value of a a is a number so this is just no more than the absolute value the absolute value of a okay. and you look, look, at, you look at the size okay. certainly if it is less or equal than one will imply also stability because if it is less or equal than one is stable then less than one is already implying stability okay. and you did this already for one example remember x n plus one equal to one half of x n this fits this form that we have right here with a equal to one half and since the norm of a is less than one then we have that x star which is the only fixed point the fixed point for this is just zero x star equal to zero is a stable and attractive And what is the beauty of that? Is that we didn't need to compute any orbit. We just check the size of this number A in front of it. Okay? Questions? If it's attractive, is it always going to be stable? For the linear system case, yes. Yeah. 
But what we're going to do on, on Thursday will be for the nonlinear system case. For the nonlinear system case, it's not implied by attractivity. Stability is not implied by attractivity. Okay. okay. So none of these is required to, for you to know right now, during the quiz. Okay. Uh, 